What up, y'all? Melody Doctor in the building. Back again for another win. Back again. This is all about bass lines. So bass is technically kind of like a melody. Is it a melody? I don't know. Maybe. I say it is because it's not a drum. Although 808s kind of sound like drums. and They're kind of mixed with drums. But a bass, bass guitar, for example, is, is like an electric guitar. It's a melody. It's a melodic instrument. A tuba is a wind instrument. It's not a tuba is clearly not a drum, and a bass guitar is clearly not a drum. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Uh, but we're not here to debate that. So I'm just saying this channel is still themed. Um, I'm still this is still a melody channel. But again, I, I do cover bass because I feel like bass is really important. But basically, before you even get into bass, let's make sure that the melody we're we're leaving space for the bass using. Fruity Parametric EQ2, so you can just go like this. You want to leave space, let's play the melody. You want to leave space for the bass. Space for the bass. I try to leave as much, literally as much space as possible without altering the sound too much. That's the key. Leave as much space as possible without altering the sound too much. So now that we have room for the bass here, which you know I already did, um, Pull up a new pattern. Let's go to add. Let's say the best basses I found for free um, is definitely in flex. Essential bass guitars, excellent. Now bass guitar works. I think bass guitar is also easier to add than an 808 in my opinion, because if you add a bass guitar, you can still add a kick. Whereas some 808s like sound like kicks. That's why I feel like sometimes it can be hard to layer 808s with basses. It's like weird like that. So like sometimes if you have an 808, you can't really put in a kick. But I like putting in a kick. Kick is like my favorite instrument. So I'm putting in a kick. Like so basically, <laughs> I, I and you know it sounds funny, but like seriously, like that'll help a lot of you guys. Also like I give you guys this piece of advice: if you struggle with basses and adding bass lines, get a bass instrument. It'll make more sense. Like get a tuba, get a get or get a bass guitar or something like that. I still don't know what instrument uh, 808 is. That's why I just don't really ever use 808s. But hey. So it's like real easy. I like I love the flex sounds because they sound they really sound like uh, guitars. And it even has like that kind of like if you play guitar, you'll hear like the parts where it's like it has like that human sound to it where it's like They'll be moving their hands. You can kind of like hear like that. That sound. It's kind of hard to describe. It's like a eek type of sound. But that's what a get. That's what really happens when you play guitar. That's why I like it, and that's why I like these. So I feel like these are just really legit. Um, but yeah. So get you guys a guitar. Basically, you play like longer notes. You can you can analyze it at this point. See, that sounds better. Let's try that again. So. Um, that one, you know, we could use potentially, but I'll just do another example since this is like a tutorial. Let's go to add again, flex. And we're just gonna play like longer notes. That's usually how good bass guitar works. You wanna be like do 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 like with the bass guitar. Although in different different uh genres it can be a little faster. And I'm trying to make it a little bit faster too, but just for this example, it would usually be a little bit more slower. Same with the tuba, like you never, um, pretty much never hear a tuba in a band just like having like a solo, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like that would just be insane. Funny, but insane. In fact, if there's a if there's a tuba band you know of that does that, I'm interested in seeing them live. But like, go through these sounds and figure out which one matches matches it the best, matches the melody the best, and that's just like relaxing and getting in touch with the feel element, using your ears and just taking your time. So let's try to find another good example. So.
What's cool about these is you can shuffle up here too. Also, like you know, with bass, you know, you gotta know where like where that sound. I say it's important to know bass because um, you'll know where like what it sounds like, and you'll know like basses are like in this range. You wouldn't play like a bass guitar up here. This is not a bass guitar. Like I don't know what bass guitar you can make this type of sound with. Like, um, it's weird actually that it would even be in here. But some some instruments cut off, you, which is like a whole different discussion. But I'm not gonna go there. But some instruments will cut off, as in like I didn't go there. They won't play that high. And you, sometimes you'll be like, whoa, why doesn't this key work? It's because like the instrument just doesn't go that high. This is a good range for a bass guitar. This is a what? that switch up that's that's hard that's actually a really good pattern right there so that's a really good example I like to switch it up like that that's, that makes that makes it good so let's just look at this nothing too complicated so C5 was like the bass note which don't get confused bass like B A S E C5 is usually that, and then this is just like an octave down, basically. And the melody would probably is probably in this range. So again, that's just not conflicting sounds. Now let's go into um, let's go into uh this mixer here, and you'll notice like see how the bass is like, see how the bass is right like, here primarily. You remember the melody is like all over here. You know what I'm saying? So again, we're just kind of separating the sounds. Let's add this here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one. You can also do things like add like a, a space between. Sometimes I'm gonna add like a micro space to make it even more realistic. That can sound more realistic. Especially if you like somewhat trash a bass. <laughs> You kind of trash your bass, it sounds way more realistic. My, my beginner bass players know what you're talking about. Well, pretty much all my bass players probably know what you're talking about. And what I'm talking about. Like, when you plan it, actually, probably you probably slur it more often. So you can switch it up and do something like that. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Alt, I totally skipped a part. Control, I did like sub, subconsciously almost. It's Control A, Alt R, randomizer. So I do the same thing with the melody that I do with the bass, which is randomizing it. Uh, we don't need the panning. Take the panning out. Uh, you can change the velocity so, so like the, each velocity, each note is hit differently. That's just more realistic because we don't have robots playing. Like you will when you play in bass, you will hit like a note probably harder than another note. Uh, so it just sounds more realistic. And again, let's go back to the mixing here. Go back to the mixing here. Now what we can do is, again, the rule here is, that I abide by, is cutting, separating the sounds as well as possible without messing with the sound too much. Now my boy Stunner, what he'll do is just like this. Which I like, too. In fact, I think bass sounds better like this most of the time. But like... But I like the... I like that rumble part there. And I'm, that's not a knock on Stunner. Because his basses are really good. He actually taught me a lot about bass, but um, I'll probably make it like this. Probably get a little bit of that, a little bit of melody out there. But keep that part there. So that's a good sound right there. What you can do is um, also add like maybe frass distortion, which I don't really use to be honest with you. But if you like that, you can go with that. Um, 
not necessarily something I do, to be honest with you. I like to use reverb too on it sometimes. I feel like it's a little different. I feel like it can sound really cool. I like re I, use I like re using reverb. Period. Reverb's like my favorite like effect. Um, that's pretty good right there. I think that's pretty solid bass. You could definitely rock with this. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions or if there's anything I missed. Uh, whatever feedback y'all have would be great. Um, as long as it's constructive. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Shout out to Retro Lodge. Uh, always shouting out Retro. Subscribe to his channel, by the way. He'll probably comment, hopefully, on this vid. Make sure you hit him with a subscribe um, and whatnot. Yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Oh yeah, make sure you guys check the How to Make, get the How to Make Beats book brought to you by Slime Green Beats. There's a link in the description. So this is Slime Green Beats. This is like an extension of Slime Green Beats, the Melody Doctor. Um, but y'all check out that book. Link in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.